on YouTube, it's Jenna, and I'm going to do kind of a different sort of video today. Um, as you can tell from the title, you can kind of guess what it's about a little bit. Um, I kind of, I have filmed this video or versions of it about three times before and um, kind of disregarded every single one and kind of really couldn't get through it. So I'm really hoping that I can get through it today. Just what a month and a half ago, um, I was diagnosed with um, clinical depression and clinical anxiety. Um, in the description box below, I will put links to um, the symptoms and criteria for being diagnosed with um, clinical depression and um, anxiety disorder, which is, I guess, the same thing. Um, I want everyone to know that that's not the definitive kind of criteria for um, depression and anxiety. They're just links that I found that were um, good, I guess, for lack of a better term. If, you f if anyone out there watching this feels like they are suffering from depression or from anxiety, Go seek help. There are resources out there. Go call your family doctor. If you are unsure and you know you want some help, reach out to a friend, reach out to a family member and ask them to go with you. You don't have to be alone in this and there are resources and you can get help and you can get better. You do not, you do not have to live feeling like there is no point. I am a wife, I am a mother, um, I work outside the home, um, I kind of have the life, the Canadian dream as it was. I mean, we have a little house, it's not glamorous, it's not fancy, but it's ours, we own it. Um, my husband and I suffered through infertility and we were really, really lucky. And we conceived a beautiful, amazing, oh, she's just, she's amazing. We have this amazing little three-year-old girl who is everything to us. And every day I thank God that he blessed me and I am a mother. And I have a husband who drives me absolutely bananas. <laughs> But he, he is a kind and loving person and we share this crazy, amazing life together. And I have a job, I have a career that I love and I get to help people and talk with people and, and be with people on their journey. And <clears throat> I, if someone was to to ask me about my life, I would share all those things and they would think, wow, she is really lucky. She has everything. Um, and it was really hard because I was going through this horrible time and I felt like there was no point. I felt like on paper, I had so much to live for and so much to be thankful for. And I would get up every single morning because I had to, not because I wanted to. And I would go through the day and put a smile on my face and fake it because inside I was flat and dead and I couldn't see the joy in anything. And in addition to that, I had anxiety. So every single moment of every single day, I felt like something horrible was gonna happen. Um, every single day that my daughter was in daycare, I would be at work and I'd be obsessively checking my phone, thinking that I was gonna get some call that something happened. Um, if my husband and my daughter were out, I would constantly be afraid that some police officer is going to come to my house. 
I, I couldn't drive over a bridge without feeling like, oh my gosh, what, what is, what's going to happen? Maybe this bridge is going to collapse and we're all going to die in the river or whatever. I mean, these were things that I lived with every single day. And it got to a point, and it's a re the thing with anxiety and the thing with depression, they're, they're insidious. And it can go, one day you're feeling like you have control over things. And you feel like, okay, I'm just having a funk. I'm just in a funk for a couple days. And then you get over it and things are fine. And then you find yourself six months later and it's not a funk. And you are, you don't experience joy anymore. You don't experience happiness anymore. And you are living with this horrible anxiety every single day that affects every aspect of your day, every single day. And it got to a point one night that I sat with my sister. I have two younger sisters. Um, one is, um, is a mother like myself and my youngest sister um, um, lives on her own with her boyfriend, um, but she also suffers from depression. And I sat with my middle sister, who was also a mother, and I said, this is what's going on. This is, this is how I'm feeling. These are the things that are going on in my head. I think I need to go to the doctor and I need to get help. What do you think? And I sat down and I explained everything that was going through my head. And she said, you need to go to the doctor. This is not normal. This, you need to get help. And at the same time that was that happened, um, a few days later, a friend of mine, I'm on this um, kind of parenting forum, and all of us have children um, that are that were born the same month. And one of my friends who I met on that board on that forum, but we become friends in real life and met, and our children have played together. Um, she confided that she's been experiencing anxiety and she'd gone to the doctor and the doctor had given her medication. So um, I immediately talked to her privately and explained some of the things that I was experiencing. But she said, I, I think that you need to call your doctor and I think you need to get help. Um, so those, those things happened. It was hard because I'm the one that um, <clears throat> holds it together. I'm the one that um, is the strong one in our relationship, is the rational one in our relationship. And I felt for a long time, like I didn't have time to deal with this. I didn't have time to be depressed. I didn't have time to feel anxiety about things. I, I had to take care of my daughter. I had my I have my own business. I have my family to take care of. I don't have time to deal with being depressed. And there were a lot of emotions for me about feeling like that. And I finally got to a point one day, they, my doctor's office had called me. I was, I was trying to work up the courage to make that phone call because it is one of the hardest phone calls I have ever made. Asking for help was the hardest thing I've had to do. I have never been one of those people that's had a hard time advocating for my health, but asking for help because I was depressed and had anxiety was the hardest phone call I have ever made. My doctor prescribed three things at that appointment. Um, one was an antidepressant um, that works for depression and anxiety. Um, we decided that I would start a therapeutic trial. Um, basically, that means that once you start the medication, they like to keep you on the medication if it's working for you and you're not getting any excessive side effects. Um, they like to keep you on it for six to nine months um, after you're feeling better. 
um, just so you get the full effect and then they properly wean you off of the medication um, if they decide to do that at that point um, as well as talk therapy and daily exercise therapy um, so those are three things that they said were very important and my doctor is was very adamant that medication is not it the pill is not going to cure me that the exercise and the talking is as important as taking the medication and getting me better and i'm also um in addition to those three things, I'm being monitored very closely every month by my family doctor as well to monitor my pro progress, how I'm doing, um, those sorts of things. So I have been put on medication and I have been on medication for about a month and a half now. So um, I'm almost at the point, they say it takes about six to eight weeks um, to feel the full effects of the um, medication I definitely feel better I don't feel as raw um, do I still have those crazy anxiety filled thoughts yes do I still feel do I still have crazy kind of nightmares sometimes yes um, most days when I have those thoughts the best way to describe it is they're not as urgent they're not as acute when I experience them. I still do experience them. Um, I think that will be something that will take longer to resolve than the depression. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a difference. Do I still feel a lot of the kind of symptoms associated with depression, the fatigue, um, all those other wonderful things? Um, yes, I still experience them. Um, but I think the number one thing that I, I do notice a difference, I don't feel like everything is hopeless anymore. I do feel like I'm coming out of the fog and I'm seeing that there is a light at the end of this tunnel and then I can be myself again. That one day I will get up and I will feel like myself again. And I want anyone who's watching this, who has experienced this or is experiencing it, you don't have to feel like this forever. You don't. There are so many resources out there and I feel like as, I mean, I'm a wife and I'm a mother, so I speak as a wife and a mother. I feel like we put everyone else first and we put everyone else's health before our own. And as mothers, we can't take care of our children if we can't take care of ourselves. So, um, that's what's been going on with me. <laughs> I don't know if anyone is interested in kind of progresses on how this is going. If um, you have any questions you can ask them in the comments um, or if you need to send me um, some sort of message you can send me a message if you have a question I wanted to do this because I feel like other people sharing their experiences with me helped me to realize that things can get better so I hope, my hope is that even if one person watches this video and says, wow, I think I need to ask for help and gets help, then this video has done its job. In case everyone's wondering why I did this video, that's the reason why I did it. And I hope that as I can kind of refocus my brain, um, then I can be on here more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.